that this is one reason people remain in one position for so long. It's not because God does not have the power to lift you. I hear what I'm saying. But because most times what you're even asking for, your mind is not comprehending it. You see something, you like it, but your mind is not comprehending the process that keeps these things in place. You don't, your mind doesn't comprehend it. You're asking God for a new car. Maybe you don't have a car. You're asking God for a car. You have not imagined. You have not thought about the fact that you have to be getting up to wash that car or send, take that car to car wash every month. Meaning a new responsibility has been added to you. You have not comprehended the fact that, hey, look, um, there are things you do as a car owner. <laughs> are you getting what I'm saying? Now you have to buy a fuel. Now so you just buy a car and think, wow, praise God, start driving the car drive until one day the car will stop on the way. And say, ah, what happened? I just bought this car. Can you imagine? And then you start calling mechanic and mechanic will come down and try it. And I say, ah, there's no fuel in the car. You didn't know that you're supposed to fuel the car. Praise God. Because you were not thinking. So when we talk about God lifting you, when we talk about God positioning you, think, are you ready? Are you prepared? Daniel chapter 2. Daniel chapter 2. Now, we know the story. This is when Daniel interpreted Nebuchadnezzar's dream. You remember the story? Nebuchadnezzar had a dream and then he said, Hey, look, anybody who's going to tell me the dream I just had and give me the interpretation um, will be blessed. And then nobody could. Then he sent out the man, Look, all those, that means all those prophets and wise men, they are all liars. They came to him and said, King, it's not so. You tell us the dream. And then we'll tell him and say, Shut up, no way. This thing. So that if I tell you the dream, now any interpretation you give me, I have to accept it. He says, no, if you are smart, if you are wise, then you will tell me the dream. And because they wanted to kill them, Daniel showed up. When they heard it, him and his friends, they decided to pray. And God opened Daniel's eyes because that was his gift. Let me show you something. Daniel chapter 1, verse 17. Chapter 1 and verse 17. As for these four young men, God gave them knowledge and skill in all literature and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Did you see that? Did you see that? Did you see that? The four of them were so smart. And that's why they were even friends. The four of them were so smart that they understood literature. They could read and understand. You understand what I'm saying? There are people who give novels to read. And they read, say, I beg, I beg. They can't go past the first two pages. Say, what, I beg, what kind of thing is this? <laughs> Praise God. I mean, they just can't. But these guys take up those literatures and wow. And they begin to explain the whole thing to you. But Daniel had understanding of visions and dreams. So he was known. For that so now the king when daniel they went to pray with his friends now let's go to chapter two when he went to pray with his friends and god gave daniel the dream now that's some faith i mean that's some faith <laughs> praise god you're asking god lord the king said if we don't give tell him the dream and the interpretation he will kill us and then you're praying and then going to a trance and then a dream is given to you. It takes faith to believe that that's the dream the king is talking about. <laughs> so sometimes, you know, when you think of this, you just think everything was just sharp, 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 sharp. But realize that, <laughs> what if I go and say the dream I just had? Because in your mind, you are thinking God came to Daniel and said, Daniel, now see, let me show you the dream. All these things were done and received by these guys were nobodies. You know what I mean? Nobody. They were just among the crowd. You know, maybe when you think of them, it's Daniel. You think of Daniel and his friends. You get what I'm saying? Daniel and his friends. But then, the moment the king promoted them, they came to the spotlight. Meaning now they could recognize their faces. They could recognize their names. So now, when a situation came up, the king made this graven image, and he said, "Everybody must bow." 
first and foremost, if you read this whole story, you will never read anywhere they mention Daniel. Right? So, did that, was it that Daniel was bowing? Of course, you know, Daniel didn't bow. But, so, how come Daniel escaped this whole drama? I want to show you something. How come Daniel escaped? But then, they went to report to the king. And let me tell you the truth. The reason they went to report to the king was not because they, did, they were not bowing. The reason they went to report to the king was because of the position they now occupy. You're not getting it. I believe there were many other people who were nothing that did not bow. I mean, somebody just say, ah, just bow. They, they should not catch you. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? But these ones, they came together and took a complaint to the king. And look at what they said. Give me that verse 12. They are certain Jews whom you have set over the affairs of the province. That's the problem. You have set these people over this province. Meaning, you are promoting people that are against your law. That was their problem. So, challenge, promotion comes with such challenges. Possibly, these people... They had no problem with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego before. But the moment this promotion took place, envy started. Well, they, are, they are not even from this, our country. They are coming to take our space. Have you heard those kind of things before? They just begin to hate on them. And all this trouble begins to take place. And then, King, it's your fault. You promoted this man. And made them rulers over your province. They are not bowing to your image. What are you going to do about it? So now you understand that it was a setup. Praise God. It was a setup. But you know the story. You see, this was the proof. This was a situation to prove this man and the promotion they just got. If they were not prepared for the promotion they just got, this would have been their end. 